autorska prava postoje nešto manje od 300 godina i zasnivaju se na principu koji je tehnološki povezan sa štamparskom presom. To podrazumeva postojanje fizičke kopije autorskog dela koji je predmet zaštite. The existing copyright, rather than enabling progress, innovation and invention, they are protecting the business model of private companies. It used to be the right of the owners, as the authors, the creators. Copyright law fundamentally means taking charge or control over information that is already public. It's also created for an economic model where you have fairly many creators and just a few publishers um, of information and, and copyright law is meant to distribute kind of money fairly from the few publishers to the many creators. When we got the internet, what we actually got was just m many more publishers than we have creators. Internet se razvija mnogo brže od zakona koji ga reguliš. Isti zakon koji reguliše kopiranje u biblioteci važi i na samom internetu. Glavni problem je što naši kompjuteri rade upravo na principu kopiranja. Most people today habitually become criminals just by going outdoors and doing perfectly natural things with, you know, being on Instagram or, or Facebook. There is basically no way in which you as a citizen can today act legally at all times with respect to copyright. And that clearly isn't constructive or useful when all citizens become criminals for reasons that they may not even be able to understand. Every country in the EU has a different copyright law and if you want to do anything across borders, on the internet, for a global audience, it gets extremely complicated and you have to hire lawyers uh, to find out what you can do and what you cannot do. The copyright system at the moment is encouraging people to seek legal sources because the legal sources are very difficult to use. They don't work in every country or if you buy an e-book you can't read it on any e-book reader you want. So in a way if we make the copyright system so complicated it's punishing those who actually want to pay for the content. For 30 years approximately now, copyright has been ever expanding. We get fewer rights every year as individuals and citizens in how we can use already public information, ideas, cultural content for reuse or remixing or making our own artistic expressions, building cultural commonalities with other people across borders. There's been a veritable revolution in how much restrictions you can put on individuals when using cultural works. While we can move contents five times around the world in a second, technically, we can't actually move it legally across even, you know, nearby borders like Sweden and Denmark or, or Bosnia and Serbia legally with no less than, you know, several years of license negotiations. U sekundi je moguće napraviti ogroman broj kopija po ceni koja se ubrzano približava nuli. I ne samo to, ove kopije postaju dostupne u čitavom svetu u momentu nastanka. Jasno je da tradicionalni principi autorskih prava ne mogu da opstanu. Autori sadržaja, distributeri, zakonodavci i aktivisti imaju potpuno različit pogled na zaštitu autorskih prava u digitalnom svetu. We need to start mapping where creators normally get their money from. Much more art than we are normally thinking about is actually financed by public money. This insinuates to me that a lot of the collective rights management organizations that currently work on behalf of authors may be better off looking actually at something like tax laws than, rather than copyright. Academic publishing is a very special and particular case when we are looking at creators and the, and the role of industry and the role of consumers. Most of the academic publishing uh, that is out there is basically written by academics who are not paid by the publisher. They are doing it because it's part of their job and actually in many cases it's something that they have to do. These discussions uh, came to prominence after the death of uh, Aaron Schwartz, the US the internet um, activist you know, a few years ago who committed suicide after being uh, charged with a quite serious, a potentially quite serious um, time in prison in the US for downloading lots of academic journals in order to make them available. But I think that it's not just the case of Arnold Schwarz. I mean, now there are, for example, there are projects the, like the Sci-Hub project where you can go and put the code, identifying an article, and then automatically someone will download it and give you access to the article. 
interestingly, what they found when they did some research as to who was using that system, they thought that it would be mainly people in like, you know, poor countries, poor universities. But actually, they found that even people in quite rich universities, in Harvard or whatever, were using this system simply because it was a lot better than going through the university library link and then go into the website of the publisher and then click and validate and having all these really complex login systems you know, that you have in universities and these people they made it really really easy and that is basically the future of uh, for particularly for academic publishing I don't see you know how it could go another way. I mean the governments and taxpayers around the world we spend a lot of money subsidizing the educational systems and higher education. A lot of the articles basically we've paid for them already, you know, and said they should benefit society. In the current European copyright reform that, that the European Commission proposed in September of 2016 most of the new ideas are very targeted at getting money to be moved from Google into the creative sector. Much of the wealth that is currently being made in, in the new IT sectors or in the financial sectors and in many other sectors as well is just not being taxed. The issue of tax justice would be one where I would like to see more effort being made by creators' organizations to ensure that the public institutions that finance public arts works, statutes, theater for children, uh, opera in many cases, you know, all of these various forms of artistic expressions that are currently relying on public subsidies, they need the tax base to work well in order for them to continue to exist. So move outside of copyright when it looks to, when you're looking at financing of culture. Is there a way to finance culture which does not depend on copyright? This would be um, something to explore for you know, researchers and also uh, authors' associations.